Well, a very warm welcome to you and um, a happy new year. It's good to be here again and indeed um, happy Christmas to you. It is still Christmas season, of course, um, and um, we are Yes, we're doing all sorts of things. Um, we're here to pray, of course. I hope that you've had a really good Christmas time, um, whatever that looks like um, for you. Um, and um, I hope that the new year has started really, really well. Um, we are not celebrating anything in particular today. Um, we are going to hear Psalm 48, and we're going to hear a part of um, one of my favourite books of the Bible, Colossians, um, Paul's letter to the Colossians, um, as, as well as um, <laughs> praying in our diocesan calendar for birds. I'm not sure I've ever prayed for birds before. Uh, perhaps I should have done. Um, but um, apparently at the start of Big School's Bird Watch, um, we're going to give thanks to God for all the birds created, um, for their beauty, variety and companionship of their song. Um, and ask for God's strength to care for them and to be grateful for all that they bring to the ecosystem. Uh, so we'll be pleased to do that um, as well, clearly, as um, praying for um, all the other things that we have on our agenda, um, both um, globally um, and more locally, and of course, in our own individual um, lives. So let's turn to our prayers. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. You laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of heaven and earth. To you be praise and glory forever. As your living word, eternal in heaven, assumed the frailty of our mortal flesh. May the light of your love be born in us, to fill our hearts with joy as we sing. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. And so we turn to Psalm 48. We have waited on your loving kindness, O God. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain is fair and lifted high, the joy of all the earth. On Mount Zion, the divine dwelling place, stands the city of the great king. In her palaces, God has shown himself to be a sure refuge. For behold, the kings of the earth assembled and swept forward together. They saw and were dumbfounded. Dismayed, they fled in terror. Trembling seized them there. They writhed like a woman in labour, as when the east wind shatters the ships of Tarshish. As we had heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, the city of our God. God has established her forever. We have waited on your loving kindness, O God, in the midst of your temple. As with your name, O God, so your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is full of justice. Let Mount Zion rejoice and the daughters of Judah be glad because of your judgments, O Lord. Walk about Zion and go round about her. Count all her towers. Consider well her bulwarks. Pass through her citadels. That you may tell those who come after that such is our God for ever and ever. It is he that shall be our guide for evermore. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. is God who shall be our guide. One of the places we look to for God's guidance, of course, are the scriptures. 
Uh, so we turn to the New Testament now and to Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 4, verse 2 to the end. Paul writes this. Devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray for us as well, that God will open to us a door for the word. that We may declare the mystery of Christ, for which I am in prison so that I may reveal it clearly as I should. Conduct yourselves wisely towards outsiders, making the most of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer everyone. Tychicus will tell you all the news about me. He is a beloved brother, a faithful minister, and a fellow servant in the Lord. I have sent him to you for this very purpose so that you may know how we are, and that he may encourage your hearts. He is coming with Onesimus, the faithful and beloved brother who is one of you. They will tell you about everything here. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, greets you, as does Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, concerning whom you have received instructions. If he comes to you, welcome him. Jesus, who is called Justice, greets you. These are the only ones of the circumcision among my co-workers for the kingdom of God, and they have been a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ Jesus, greets you. He is always wrestling in his prayers on your behalf, so that you may stand mature and fully assured in everything that God wills. For I testify for him that he has worked hard for you, and for those in Laodicea and in Herapolis, Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. Give my greetings to the brothers and sisters in Laodicea and to Nympha and the church in her house. When this letter has been read among you, have it read also in the church of the Laodiceans and see that you read also the letter from Laodicea and say to Archippus, see that you complete the task that you have received in the Lord. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace be with you. The word of life, which was from the beginning, we proclaim to you. The darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. The word of life, which was from the beginning, that which we heard, which we saw with our own eyes and touched with our hands. We proclaim to you, for our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of life, which was from the beginning, we proclaim to you. Well, let's turn to our prayers of intercession now as we reflect upon God's word and pray for the church, the world and the day ahead of us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you that you are our guide. At the beginning here of a new year, so we ask that your Holy Spirit will guide us. Lord, as we think of Paul here greeting so many of the people that he knows, friends that he has, so we thank you for the time that we've spent recently with friends and family over Christmas. Lord, we thank you for those relationships in our own lives <clears throat> which sustain us, people who are important to us. And as we commit ourselves to following you once again this new year, so we thank you for the faith that we have in you. Thank you that we can call you our friend. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So, Lord, we pray for the church today. Particularly, we're asked to pray for the church in places of conflict. Lord, we know that there are many places where it's difficult to be church, where Christians are persecuted, where conflict either that because of faith or otherwise makes, makes witnessing 
and living out the faith difficult. So Lord, we do pray for churches in these circumstances. Not least Christians in places like Afghanistan, in Ukraine, in uh, North Korea, places where it's difficult to, to practice faith easily and safely. Lord, we pray that your strength would be upon your church throughout the world as we prepare to celebrate Epiphany tomorrow. So we pray that the light of the Christ child will be apparent to everybody across the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we're asked to pray for the Holy Land today, for peace, justice and reconciliation. As we reflect once again at this time of year on the nativity accounts of the events which took place all those years ago and the prince of peace being born into the world well lord we know that so often that peace is lacking <coughs> so lord we do pray for peace and lord we pray for our own communities too where there is division and disunity well we pray lord that you would bring love peace and unity but lord in your mercy hear our prayer lord we do pray for our own benefits for our churches at st john's staple grove and all saints norton fitzwarren thanking you for the celebrations that were offered in your name over the Christmas season. Thanking you for the many people who came to hear that account once again, to sing and to pray, to praise you. Lord, we pray as we enter a new year that you would enable us to grow in your name. Your Holy Spirit will bless us in our life and work and ministry as we seek to serve those around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we do thank you for our diocese. Today we're joining in the prayers of our diocese for uh, birds. Indeed, as I offer this prayer, I hear birds singing in the garden perhaps which often I would take for granted. But Lord, we thank you for your creation, for the ways in which birds are part of that, for everything that they bring to the ecosystems and in many ways I don't understand. Lord, we thank you for them. And we do pray that you would open our hearts and eyes to appreciate more around us of your amazing creation. Lord, in your mercy, <clears throat> hear our prayer. <clears throat> Lord, as we pray for creation, so we pray for the people we know who are suffering in body, mind or spirit. Remembering, of course, those for whom Christmas has been a difficult time, a challenging time. And the knowledge that high infection rates with COVID mean that many people are anxious, and nervous, and cautious. Lord, we bring before you those people we know who are suffering in particular, perhaps with bad health, physically or mentally. Lord, we bring before you once again uh, John and Derek, Rosemary and Jean, Lord, we remember those who grieve. 
friends and family of uh, Jeffrey. Lord, we pray that you would pour out upon all of these people the healing oil of your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we pray for the day ahead of us, so we ask that your hand would be upon us. Your Holy Spirit will strengthen us. Become mindful of our of our schools as they return to their terms now with pupils on the whole uh, resuming their studies. So, Lord, we do pray for the two schools within our own benefice at Staple Grove and at Norton Fitzwarren, <coughs> thanking you for their communities and praying that you would enable those terms to start well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So, almighty God, in the birth of your son, Jesus, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word, shown us the fullness of your love. Help us to walk in his light and dwell in his love, we may know the fullness of his joy, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May God, who has called us out of darkness into his marvellous light, bless us and fill us with peace. Amen. And let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good to have you with me once again, and um, I hope you have a, a really good day and look forward to catching up with you soon. Take care. <laughs>